Alex, uh, Bitcoin has reached almost 13,000 today. Uh, it's the first time since uh, December 2017. Do you expect it, it will run uh, breaking the 20,000 high um, like maximum point soon or uh, we will see Bitcoin falling back uh, soon again? Well, I can't be sure one way or the other, but I think there are a lot of reasons why um, this rally that we're experiencing right now has a lot of legs and why it could go a lot higher. Um, the first thing is that we're coming off of uh, a cyclical low where Bitcoin hit a price of around $3,200 from a high of about 19000 Now, that drawdown from peak to trough is one of the most severe that we've ever seen. So the price right now is kind of like a beach ball that's been held underwater and it's been pressed down and pressed down. And as it gets released, it starts to move uh, quite violently. Um, so I think just based on that cyclicality, there's a lot more room to run. But there's some very specific reasons why I think the price could uh, continue to go higher. The first is that we're now less than a year away from the next halving. So that's when the uh, mining reward gets cut in half um, for miners, which means that there will be a smaller or lower supply growth, which means that there you know, potentially could be greater demand based on what's available in the supply. Um, the second reason is that more recently in the news, we've seen governments um, announcing basically a never-ending quantitative easing. So effectively, they're planning on cutting interest rates um, and uh, potentially putting themselves in a currency war against others um, in order to make their exports more competitive and make their economies more stimulated. Now we've seen gold, which I think is a decent proxy for Bitcoin, breaking out of a six-year trend line and Bitcoin obviously following along suit. And then the most recent thing is this uh, announcement by Facebook um, that they're launching their own cryptocurrency, Libra. Now, um, I don't think you know Libra and Bitcoin are competitors with one another. I think they're very different. Libra is a you know a permission system that exists inside of a corporate ecosystem. Bitcoin is a permissionless cryptocurrency that can be used by anyone. But I think what Libra will do, and what it's helped to you know get people to realize basically, is that there's a lot of enterprise interest in this. And as more and more big companies create on ramps into this digital asset ecosystem, they are potentially bringing on board billions of new customers. So if you've got 2.4 billion Facebook customers who have access to wallets where they can buy and sell Libra, that means they could also potentially buy and sell Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. And so you're going to go from 50 million to billions of people who are finally going to be in this uh, ecosystem. And I think that's a catalyst which you know, will continue to drive the price higher. So there's a lot of good things happening right now. There's a lot of reasons to be bullish. Um, and the most interesting thing, actually, is that interest from retail hasn't really moved at all during this entire rally. If you look at uh, Google search results for uh, you know, buy Bitcoin, it's moved slightly up, but compared to the last cycle, it's barely moved at all. So what we're seeing is a lot of the buying coming from you know, institutions, high net worths, um, um, crypto asset funds, and you know, people who are sort of more familiar with the asset class. What we haven't seen are more traditional vanilla style investors. So I think as that group moves into the space, I will begin to see the rally sustain itself. I want you to comment on another uh, statement that was made uh, recently by Eric Voorhees, uh, the Shapeshift CEO. He said that, yeah. um, as you said, we are, we are seeing an increase in the adoption of Bitcoin. Uh, it get, it's getting more and more mainstream, but uh, that's accompanied by another uh, factor, which is the network will get congested and fees will go up, according to Eric Voorhees. So do you, what do you think about this issue? Is it a problem? Well, I'm not sure that it's a problem for price. I think that there's enough demand for Bitcoin as a store of value that network fees are actually not really an issue. But I think if you want to see Bitcoin succeed as both a form of digital gold and as a global payment system, then you do need to resolve this issue. And I think that's probably going to be an inhibitor towards mainstream growth um, as a payment tool rather than just as a store of value. Um, but there are obviously you know, potential solutions to that. The Lightning Network, um, which has scaled significantly during this bear market. And, that's what's very interesting, obviously, is when you see tons of growth and development and building happening during periods when people aren't paying attention to the price, so that when the market turns, um, there actually is greater capacity. And I think Bitcoin you know, still has the deepest technical teams working on it today, and they're solving a lot of these problems. But I do agree that it's an issue, and if it's not solved, it will mean that Bitcoin won't reach its full potential, though I still think there's enough potential for the price to go higher. Um, we registered a clear dominance of Bitcoin, over 60% of the of the market is dominated by, by Bitcoin. Why do you think other uh, altcoins are struggling compared to Bitcoin? Well, I think Bitcoin is sucking the oxygen out of the room, um, for one. So <laughs> there isn't really a lot of demand yet for a lot of these uh, so-called altcoins. And generally speaking, in the early stages of a rally, people tend to buy the leader and not the laggard. So you buy the largest, most liquid 
most mature asset within each category. And you can see that, you know, with Bitcoin versus altcoins, and you can see it right now with gold versus silver, right? Silver's not doing that much, but gold is. But typically what happens over time, especially in the crypto market, is that as Bitcoin prices increase, people have a wealth effect where all of a sudden their holdings are worth a lot more. And they're looking to rotate down market into things that are smaller uh, that could potentially perform uh, as well as Bitcoin had in the past. Um, now, I'm not sure that that's going to happen for every single altcoin. So if you're you know, a bag holder and you're sitting on you know, some random altcoin, I'm not suggesting it's going to go higher. I think this time around, because the market's more mature and because there's more value that you can actually identify in each of these different crypto ecosystems, I think that certain ones will outperform and others will not. And I think there will be you know, hundreds of thousands of vaults that won't participate in any rally whatsoever. But I do think a few will, um, because I do think that some of these alternative um, you know, coins in these different crypto ecosystems um, have tons of value that has yet to be unlocked. And as a result, the price will, will go a lot higher. Can you mention a couple of those? <laughs> um, well, um, I can say the ones that I think so, like Ethereum, for example, has actually participated in this rally. So it bottomed at around 80 and it's now around 300. So in terms of a, you know, trough to where we are now, it's actually roughly the same. If you, and, and Litecoin and some of the others are, are like that as well. If you move further down market, though, you'll see that some of them haven't participated at all. And what, what we see is that a lot of the um, you know, so-called like protocol um, tokens basically have, have not really performed, the ones that launched after Ethereum and, and are still sort of laggards. And I would suspect that the ones that are, you know, have deep markets that are, that are widely traded and widely held will be the ones that will perform. I think it's based on those metrics. I'm not going to name specifics at this point. Thanks a lot, Alex. See you next time. Thanks for uh, having me on. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.